So my name is Iman Shu. I am with G from past couple of years, and in my experience, I have worked across multiple domains of project, uh, from being pre digital marketing experience to post to digital marketing experience, from e-commerce to analytics to the cyber security. Pretty much you name it, I have I'd have worked upon it. So today we are gonna uh, that's, that's about myself. So today we are gonna talk about uh, okay, slides loading fine performance. So my question is why performance? Why we are looking at the performance aspect? So in the today's uh, digital world, you know that we are pretty much overcrowded. You name a problem, you will find a multiple solution for that. And where do, do, does you as out to other other solutions? It's the performance. If your performance is not go, good, the customer might move away to another project. So I'm going to uh, ask you a simple one question. Uh, can you answer this question like any educated guess would be fine? What is the average load time of a web page before a customer moves away? Five seconds. Thank you. This is the reason. Yeah. If your site is taking more than two seconds on a desktop front, you might be losing revenue. Okay, uh, for the bra mobile browser, if it is more than eight seconds, you are losing revenue. And if the content uh, heavy site, then in one second you can add it up. Not more than that, right? So, what can we do that to improve? So, my first my first question is this example. Okay, so, there is a one basic silly mistake committed under this code. What is that silly mistake? If you can find it out. That is, it is because of the mob mentality that we have. We just wanted to finish our work. We don't want to look like quality of the code. We just want to finish up. And it might be a small mistake for a small one file. We might not be looking at, like saying that it's just gonna add few milliseconds. But when there are thousands of files and thousands of components, it's gonna be a huge one. Just tell us, like what, what's wrong in this code? This is simple code. Hmm? Yes. So most of the developers commit this mistake and I have faced it a lot. Well, and when, we, when I look at the code, I see a lot of this statement. It's suppose that there are five imports, they have done it in a one file and there are 60 files. Then yeah, then around doing 300 uh, imports kind of this statement. It's gonna take 0 0.1 millisecond extra for this one statement, one line of code. And imagine it for the 300 lines or such lines. It's gonna add huge number amount of time in your performance work, LCP basically. So what what can we do? Take the basic features to avoid such problem. Ooh, why it is coming as black? Okay. So it's kind of blocked, but I can explain, I, I'll read it out for you. So what first thing we have to do for all such mistakes is avoid unnecessary imports. Use the hooks, pregnant, Okay, you can uh, avoid uses of local storage. We generally do it a lot, of, a lot of use, use actually. For storing the like cookies, you want to use it. You want to store a local analytics data, you use it, but you should avoid it. Okay, now come to the like, this is the most underrated function in the React. Okay, React menu. How many of you are aware of it? Have you used it? Okay. So I see few hands, yeah, that's fine. So how does a rendering renders, like first how it, when there is a props change, it re-renders, a component gets re-renders and that re-rendering, what happens, that re-rendering will compare the data with the, your DOM data that is available. And then it will make the changes. But what can be, what this, re, where this React memo can help us? So suppose that you have a parent component, we all have, I am taking the I taking the example of this uh, simple code actually. Where we have three functionalities: one is movie title and release date, and another is a uh, live view count. Okay, so live view count is a uh, real time data, but these two are not. So when you render like this pairing component, it's gonna re-render everything if you use a def default export. But if you want to use this React demo, what, what it will do, these two things will be in a separate component. And it will have a virtual memory there itself. It, where, what was the previous state data, it will store it up and compare with the new one. If there is no change, it will not going to render this child component. 
So imagine this, uh, we are saving some time here uh, by not rendering the uh, child components again and again. And if you are going to look at the production level, so if there you have the product, uh, product catalog, whole catalog, and how many renderings you're going to save it. This is the one thing that you can achieve with this thing. But you cannot use it everywhere, right? So you have to avoid it at some places. You have to do your due diligence, I will say that. You have to analyze like where we can use it. If the states are varying infinitely, you should not use it because it's going to harm it rather than helping it. So it's kind of over engineering if uh, you're not doing the due diligence on this one. So have you seen this map? Anyone? Bundle, bundle sizing. What's wrong in that? Okay, that is one. Yes, that is also wrong. That is called dependency duplications. And there is one thing I would like to point out here is that index.js file. Have you seen that uh, it is really big? It is not being chunked out. So what we can do, we can split out uh, like what happens. Basically, I'll explain you the scenarios. When you when you load your page, these all these files with the help of back Webpack get loaded in the form of bundles. Okay. When you uh, load a website, it will come from the server side. Your client side will request to server side for these files. When the size of these files are too big, it's going to take time from the coming to your server, from your server side. So what we have to do, we have to split it out. We have to reduce their size. Okay. If we are re uh, reducing their size, what else we can do? Because redu reducing their size will not be sufficient. You can just reduce the size, small requests, sending one by one, one by one. That will not be sufficient. So another thing that comes in the picture is this lazy loading. La what is lazy loading? And you, you might have used it a lot. People use it. You have, have you guys? Please. Yes. So what lazy loading, lazy loading is do? So it, it will load the content first, whatever is there on your front end. Okay. When you scroll down, it will really, back in background, it will be loading up the bundle of files that is there in the background. Okay. So this is the in the performance, this lazy loading can really help a lot. So let's say that you have a dashboard page where you have the graphs and all these things, and the below down you have the order details and everything. You're not gonna uh, your user will not gonna see this uh, uh, orders and all these details. He just wanna see the graphs. Why are you loading it? Why are you waiting it for it? Okay. So you first, what you should, should do? You should lazy load apply the lazy load to your component. Okay. So those the kind of features that is there on the above dashboard, you should bundle them in one separate file, one separate bundle and the lower one in a separate bundle. So this way and then apply the lazy loading. So what will happen in the, the after that, it will load your first or whatever the first uh, bundle is there, it will load the first one and it will present it to the customer. It will not have that, yeah, we have a syncing icon like loading icon is there. You will not face that issue, kind of issue because of this. Okay, and in the background, the second bundle is getting loaded. When he scrolls down, he will have the second bundle. So, one question I have faced a lot is like, when should we chunk it out? Like, what is the sizing we should have? So, as per my experience, we found out that if your uh, chunk file for the uh, React, I mean, bundle size is getting more than 2 MB, you should separate it out. If your site is content heavy, like ours, then you can keep it till 3.5 or 4 MBs that at max, not more than that. Okay. So this is a basic example of how code, if you might not be aware, so that's why I added it up, like if you can have it as a reference, like how can you can achieve it, this one. So what we are doing here, we are applying the lazy load function here and split it out, split it out, uh, splitting out our functionalities, like in a different, different bundles, like home functionalities, whatever type is there, in one bundle and the billing billing page uh, functionality in one function, the features that we have that we use it on the every page that in one fe one features and <coughs> sorry and the uh, other kind of function low using function and the function features B such such uh, you can achieve it like 
it depends on your educated guess, like how you want to achieve it, uh, based on your requirements, based based on uh, like what is the ask for for your organization. Okay, and this is the third, like as he mentioned out like movement of JS. Why were we were seeing that big uh, movement of JS file because we were not having up to date version. So sometimes what happens we will have the older version and it will get up to date. And it will, they will optimize it. They will uh, add, reduce the security flaws in that functionality. We have to look out for the in those new versions. We should cannot be static with the older version. We added it just once and we didn't check it out. Neither of us check out the when the build happens. It do give, gives us the warning that uh, this there is update version available. But no, none of us do check that. We should really check it out. And what happens like most of the cases, but when uh, when when we check out our project, we let's say that we are 10 developers are working on, on a single project. So for same functionality, there might be different NPM packages available. So if all the developers might be using some different uh, different packages, that will create the duplication issue and it will increase your bundle size as well. So we should look out for those things as well. And we should also, one thing that we should look out for the what the bargain is, like what we are trading off. If we are adding something, we are losing something. Let's say that you are adding a good uh, movement.js package that we are, you don't have to write the functionality for to, for the date time. Okay. But you are adding something to bundle size, which will uh, Im impact your performance. So we should avoid doing that. Okay. And the one example is that like whether it is necessary to do that. In my case, what we found out that SHA256 encryption. You all might have been aware of it. So when you are doing encryption, so in React, uh, there are a lot of packages available for it, which might quite go to 256 KBs and 512 uh, KBs, something like that. But what I found out that with the three help of three for writing just three lines of code, you can achieve it really easily. Why you want to add a dependency for that? It's not like we, we just want to reduce our like effort. That should not be the case. We can add it uh, those, those uh, smaller and simpler functionality by ourselves. We need not to go for the dependencies. Okay, so now coming to the next topic, all where we can improve the performance, throttling and debounce. So have we uh, we have all all seen has that search bar. So in that we have the auto suggestion keys, right? So when we click the first uh, first key, keystroke, then there will be a there will be auto suggestions when we hit the second keystroke. There will be a suggestion, but how does that works? Our system cannot be that fast, right? So what we do, like, where can like these are the operations that are quite expensive. You make it operation, it will be a, there will be thousands of results. It will querying down and giving you the result, and then you hit the second keystroke. There will be multiple keystrokes. Like users can hit the sixteen to twenty keystrokes as per our analytics data in a search box at a time okay so that's where we are losing some performance okay so what we can do we can apply the debouncing right so rather than querying it directly one by one one by one, by one we were having the delayed response so rather than doing that what we can apply the debouncing, right so what debouncing this do, debouncing do like it will apply a timeout so if a user hits a keyword it will wait for some milliseconds like, so let's say that uh, it's up to your use case, how you, how much you want to wait for it. So you, you will wait for that time. If the user doesn't hit the second keyword, you will query the data. Okay. If he's not hit, if he has hit it, then the timers will re restart and it will again wait for that amount of time to uh, execute the query. That, that is how this debouncing can be done and it can help you to optimize this expensive queries that you've done on the auto keyword suggestions, all these things. Okay. This is the one basic example that I have, I have taken it out for the, how you can create a debouncing function you, you have not created up. Okay. Uh, I'll provide you the PPTs that you can wrap it up later or for your reference that how to create it up. You just need to create a debounce function, which will re return a function and it will have a timer in it. You can provide the time, <coughs> the time, time how much the time you want to set it out before it, it gets set out. Okay. Flushing. 
sometime what we need to do we need to delay we need to run the actions before the delay okay let's say that there is a priority task that you need to run then what happens we have the applied the timer we need to flush it out we need to avoid this timers for these things okay so that can be done with this flushing so in this case what you have to do you have to just write one more function here and uh mind with this is uh, debounce function what will it will do it will store the argument uh, arguments that is uh, being uh, rendered by like uh, this uh, function okay and uh, saved it for the later first this uh, priority task will execute then the next one uh, like that the delayed one so uh, debouncing is not that simple you have to look out for the real time cases because there are chances that there might be priority task there might be greedy task that you need to be run fast that that you have to look out for because and it uh, this debouncing can be also be achieved with the third party tool that load dash load dash we should we will say if you are or developing a react project and that to at a organization level you might have this load dash for multiple reasons okay so there is in this load dash you will have this functionality or if you want to go through the code there is available in the git that you can refer it for this debouncing another thing we can do is the throttling throttling is exactly opposite of the debouncing okay we want to minimize the number of queries in a time period we don't want to perform the n number of queries n number of time in the limited amount of time so where it can help so there are chances like when customer customer do resizing of your product like minimizing maximizing and in the react case of the react it re-renders all these component to get re-renders okay so that's where we can apply the throttling we can just cache it out cache it out the result that we got the first time and store it up okay and re-render re that result or we can what we can do we can have the states in the states we can store the data for this uh, different different uh, type of sizings and we can present it up rather than re-rendering it up okay like now comes to the part like when to use the throttling and when to use the debounce so if you are not concerned about the intermediate result then you can use the debouncing but if you are concerned about intermediate result then you should not but the throttling is that like if you are if you need the intermediate result like the quick uh, fast result i will say that because if you don't want to wait uh, show that loading icon then you should use the throttling if you have seen the M amazon home page right say so they 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 use that okay so one basic mistake everyone also commits that initializing the props in this uh, constructor i have seen it a lot what happens if this uh, uh, this uh, props get changed so this function will not re render because you have declared and the declared the states in the constructor itself so it will not get re rendered so you, rather than uh, declaring this up here or uh, passing this basically uh, props here in this constructor you should just declare it and pass it in a separate function okay this is how the exact way you should be doing it okay and there are other life cycles methods also that you can use that uh, should props the update and you can this would be a better uh, better solution for such kind of problems rather than directly uh, creating a function because this is inbuilt and available and it is highly optimized for that okay so ways to use the uh, life cycle method so what i have seen across many organizations like they generally don't use this life cycle methods properly and uh, i'll take an example of this should component update and uh, what, what was the first one C component will receive props okay in what cases should be uh, this is really a beneficial function should component update life cycle method for our performance aspect so if there is a change in the your props okay then only it uh, if you're using this for life cycle method then only it will re-render your component otherwise it will not so it's really helpful out there rather than using the first one 
I am declaring a separate function or either or declaring a separate function for that. Okay. So another top uh, topic I would like to cover as time is short, like gzip, gzip. So generally, what we have the bundle size of our uh, project is too long, right? Uh, seven to eight MB. This is uh, another tool that we can use it up to compress it to in the KBs. So it's a the third party tool. What it does, uh, you just have to add its reference in your webpack and in your webpack. After that, you have to just add the one line code to identify your web server to that uh, this file. It do generate rather than generating bundle.js file, it do generate another type of file that is called G uh, with the dot GZ files. Okay, you can use those kind of files rather than using bundle files, and it will really help you to improve your performance. You can zip out your first images with this tool. Okay, you can uh, zip out your bundle files. You can uh, you can uh, zip out your CSS files there out there. Okay, so I guess time is done. Questioning will be there in the training. Thank you.